The purpose of these brief webinars are to provide in-depth, targeted information supporting knowledge and application of the Illinois ECE competencies. The focus of this webinar is where did the ECE competencies come from? My name is Nancy Latham. I'm from Illinois State University. And my name is John Adara Ernst with Heartland Community College. And as we said, the purpose of this webcast specifically is to overview how the 56 competencies were developed using the original ECE benchmarks for levels 2 through 5. It really is just a repackaging of those benchmarks, but we think explaining the process helps you even better understand the competencies themselves. And then hopefully that knowledge serves as a foundation for understanding and using the competencies in your own certificates, degrees, programs as you embed um, substantively embed credentials, the Gateway's credentials, in those programs. There were many organizations and individuals within these organizations that made up the Competency Partnership Team. These included the Illinois State Board of Higher Education, the Illinois State Board of Education, the Illinois Community College Board, Gateways to Opportunity, which is managed through INCRA, the Illinois Department of Human Services, and the Governor's Office of Early Childhood. So to explain our process a little bit, um, this, this all began as part of an EPI grant team uh, in 2015 that was looking at ways to assess across the partnership. And the one thing we realized we all shared was our alignment and commitment to the ECE gateways through level five. And so we began to look at those and um, we chose this slide background. We love this background because it reminds us of that day that um, that work was done. But it was a team of probably eight to nine people, community college, uh, the governor's office representatives were there, Illinois Board of Higher Ed, Gateways, um, four-year institutions, et cetera, were sitting on this team. And we decided to look at these benchmarks. And those of you that are familiar, and I'm going to hop around the screen here just a little bit, but those of you that are familiar with the original um, benchmarks are used to a document that looks something like this. The levels two through four, the ECE credentials, and then, of course, the um, level five, ECE credentials, you're used to those. And those documents, when you actually take all of those bench benchmarks apart, uh, there were 347 of them total. And so the um, these benchmarks, uh, we actually just got together, we cut the 347 benchmarks apart, laid them across the table, and we all each looked at each benchmark and decided at what professional level, and you see those listed below here, at what professional level does that knowledge, that skill, or that ability, or uh, what, whatever that benchmark was, at what professional level does it become essential knowledge for that level? And the levels we used were the teacher assistant level, the teacher level, the lead teacher level, and the master teacher level. So those were the levels that guided the original content analysis and sort of the 347 benchmarks. When we look at the overall process, the stage two really became a compilation of the benchmarks. So we thought about the idea of knowing, doing, and having leadership or responsibility around a uh, specific benchmark that benchmark that was indicated. And what we did was sort based on these three categories and then sort into the seven existing gateway content areas. And one of the things that's again very important to emphasize is that structurally the organization of the gateways content areas remains the same. The benchmarks remain intact what this process represented was a repackaging of benchmarks to competencies. Once this initial sorting was done, they were set out to a larger committee for validation and confirmation in terms of alignment. So then stage three, as you can imagine, so we have, the, at this point, the benchmarks had been sorted, 347 had been sorted by those professional levels that we talked about, teacher, lead teacher, uh, I mean, assistant teacher, teacher, lead teacher, and master teacher. And then within each of those groupings, those subgroupings, further um, content analysis was done to, to look at them in the knowing, doing, and applying levels, and then even further analysis into the content areas. So you can imagine these are now cross-sected and dissected a hundred ways. Um, and in that then, little bubbles or pockets of clusters, as we like to refer to them, of benchmarks emerged that served to 
uh, give the initial competency statement or competency language. Now that initial language is very different than what, or not very different, but it's different than what we see now in the 56 because there was a lot of refinement and a lot of expert advice and um, input into what the 56 final statements would actually be. But the result of that process, that's really how they kind of bubbled up is, is by these clusters that uh, emerged into the 56 competencies. In terms of development of a master list, once the validated list of the 56 competencies were created, which again were organized by the seven content areas and cross-tabbed by professional practice, which included assistant teacher, teacher, lead teacher, and master teacher, a organizational structure that was added that provided citations for each original benchmark that was used to inform the creation of the competency and the benchmarks that informed the competency now became the competencies descriptors. All of the competencies are aligned with NACI and IPTS standards as they were originally. And in the document that you're about to look at, you can see how the last two columns demonstrate alignment with NACI and IPTS, the previous column. Second one from the left demonstrates alignment with gateways. And the idea is that with this organization, accountability, reporting by NACI, IPTS, Gateways is easily organized and reflective within the competencies. And lastly, as, uh, as I said, this work was done, um, this initial work and content analysis that resulted in the, the very rough draft of the early 56 competencies was done in 2015. 2016, that work was vetted through uh, a lot of expert groups that you see here on your screen, including the PDAC Steering Committee, PDAC itself, ELC PSQ Help Committee, IAE CTE Access, the IAI ECE Panel, ISBE, IBHE, IDHS, the Governor's Office on Early Childhood Gateways to Opportunity, and ICCB. All of these groups gave wonderful expert input into what would be the final 56 competencies that uh, you are going to see in front of you. So we hope you'll, you'll continue on to the next webinar, which will actually explain uh, the next couple webinars, explain what the competencies are, how you can actually better understand them and their design, and then also benefits to using and aligning to them.